Of course, a little bit more of a sadder time in the franchise as we did not make the playoffs. Obviously, 9-8 and eight is a very good season for this Seahawks team and maybe even a little bit too good. We talked about, you know, maybe really, really working on those sliders before next season starts. I feel like they were in a good spot. They were, uh, you know, kind of what I had for last year for the most part. And, you know, a lot of things were challenging. Obviously, we had a really bad season throwing the ball in general, but we were able to stay in the game quite a bit. Could be just something completely outside of sliders, and that is just heart, honestly. Just just perseverance and heart, or probably the sliders. But we, of course, still made it competitive, and this is the result of the season we had. Let's take a look at the schedule, of course. One of the games, you're going to be like, oh, he definitely cheated. I really wanted a snow game, and I backed out a bunch of times. Oh, it was only two times I backed out of the C uh, Chiefs. Uh, you know, backed out a couple times there. Um, and then the Chargers, obviously, we disconnected. But the season started off strong with a 32-25 to victory over the former quarterback, Russell Wilson, obviously playing the Niners here, down 21 in that one. Falcons only by four, Lions by 13. Beat up on the Saints, but lost to teams like the Falcons and Lions. Of course, Cardinals, we know about Kyler Murray and Hopkins being out like pretty much half the year. Both times we played them. Lost by 10 against the Chargers, won by two against the Giants, seven against the Char Cardinals, even though, once again, they didn't have Kyler or DeAndre Hopkins. 11 or 21 points lost against the Buccaneers. Not surprising at all. Seven to the Raiders. That was a game we should have won. The Rams, another game we should have won. Lost by four. Panthers won by four. Niners, we win by three. Chiefs, such a disappointing loss by three. Of course, won by the three against the Jets. Almost choked that. And then a super battle for week 18. Sadly, didn't end up mattering. But a win there. Obviously, we just had that. So if you've been watching the series. You probably know, and if you haven't been watching the series, maybe subscribe. Check or you know, check it out. Stick around. It's uh, I've been having some fun, and I hope you will as well. Drew Locke, of course, was the quarterback for some time, and then he just missed the what? It was the the straw that broke the camel's back. One too many bad throws, and it was just such an egregiously bad throw, where it was going to be like a sixty yard plus touchdown, and it was a ten yard throw, and he missed it. I don't care that it was raining. It was too much. Of course, Gino came in, really didn't play well. We decided to go with Eason, and he, even though the four picks are there, he did well. He was strong. You could tell that, you know, his average, 250 yards a game pretty much, whereas Gino, 150, I'd say locks. I don't want to, like, do the math myself, but probably about 170 at most. So Eason was slinging the thing. Throw power matters. Completion percentage was higher. Yards per game. Oh, it's literally right there. They're nice, sweet, smart. Uh, of course, looking at the rushing numbers, this was the people's champion, Kenneth Walker. Nearly 400 carries, 1,939 yards, 18 touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry, and a fumble count we do not want to talk about. 61 was his longest. Penny really didn't get that much burn, but he just wasn't that great, to be honest, and then no one else really had many attempts. Metcalf, under 1,000 yards, which is just such a disappointment. Same with Bo Melton and Lockett. Well under 100 yards. Bo Melton, though, had a pretty good year for himself. Fance injured. Would have probably got himself to like seven to 900 yards maybe if he didn't get injured for those last three to five weeks. Uh, Kenneth Walker, a couple of receptions, but once again, really not good in our receiving game. Obviously, uh, the blocking. The numbers look okay. The sacks allowed aren't really that high, but man, they allowed some pressure this year. And Abraham Lucas, the most egregious of them all. Then defensively, Jordan Brooks, 132 yards, uh, 132 tackles, anyways. Uh, 122 tackles allowed by uh, or given to Jamal Adams. Had a really good season, actually. Interceptions were low. Sacks weren't great, but he was pretty good in coverage. And, you know, he hit the ball out a lot. I mean, what was the fumbles count? Two, but, I mean, he was popping people left and right. Sack totals didn't. Wosu do it? He did with 10 sacks. And Oliver for an interior guy just joining the team. Eight and a half is not bad. Shelby Harris, though, with eight. Boy, Amafe. With eight, which is really surprising. It might have been that one really good game. I think he had a couple of like that. Brooks at five and a half. You know, he had some pressures. And then the picks. Tariq Wollin with 15 interceptions. This guy absolutely killed it. Same with another guy that killed it. Jason Myers only missing two kicks out of 40. If that isn't best kicker in the league, I don't know what is. I really don't. Of course, we signed him up for another two years, I think. I don't even remember. Dixon, of course, you know, a lot of uh, angled punts. Goodwin. 1,000 yards with a touchdown. Not a bad season, obviously. Got a couple of fumbles, sadly, though. Let's take a look at the rest of the league before we go into the awards, though, as I'm obviously curious to see how our peers performed. Brady, 5,804 yards, 
touchdowns, 51. Interceptions, 14. And a passer rating of 116, uh, or 111.6. Could be the MVP of the league. Of course, Josh Allen looks pretty good here, too. Winston with a bunch of picks. Uh, Russell Wilson for the Broncos was awful. I know we had a really bad season, but when you think about where we are as a rebuild team and how much money he got paid, not a bad decision. Not going to lie. Rodgers is all right. Uh, Dak was okay. Baker was really good for the Panthers. Teddy wasn't bad. He played for the Dolphins, apparently. Deshaun Watson. That's a lot for uh, eight games or seven games, whatever he played. Uh, of course, Derek Carr, awful. Carson Wentz, amazing. What a freaking year. Uh, Stafford was pretty bad after the interceptions he threw to us. Kirk Cousins was pretty safe, but good. Trey Lance, same sitch. Same with Lamar. And uh, Kyler, once again, missed half the year. But even when he came back, looked really bad. Like, really bad. Uh, for his standards, at least. Of course, best running back in the league, Mr. Kenneth Walker. couple of touchdowns, though, for guys like Ezekiel Elliott. Could scare us because, especially with those fumbles, might lose best running back. But I don't think there's a doubt in my mind that he is, of course, the uh, you know rookie of the year. He had a great year there. Let's take a look at the yards per game, which went to Kenneth. Best yards per carry of eligible guys was Taylor then Henry, and uh, I don't know if we want to really go all the way down. I mean, he was like top 10 for yards per carry, at least. Who had the longest run of the year? A 98-yarder for two running backs, Zeke and Chubb. Can maybe see it for Chubb, but Zeke? It's a little surprising, to be honest. Receiving Tyler freaking Boyd. Oh, my. Cooper Cup outperformed by yards by him. No triple crown this time, buddy. Uh, the most touch uh, catches went to Michael Thomas. The most yards, once again, went to Boyd. The most touchdowns to Godwin. So not even not the triple crown guy, but the zero crown guy. Like the highest average probably of all of them, but overall not the highest player there. Highest or uh, longest reception, which is surprising. 92 yarder, Christian McCaffrey 92. That makes sense to be fair. Uh, and then what was like the best yards per catch average in the league? It was Tyler Boyd at 16.7. That man had himself an absolute year Blocking, do we really want to see this? DJ Humphrey's a terrible season. And obviously, this is all going to be misleading. Shaq Mason, though, pretty good season regardless, even for a guard. Uh, sack totals on uh, defense. Aaron Donald with 24. Von Miller, 23. Leonard Floyd with the help of Aaron Donald, 19. The Rams, I mean, they made the playoffs, but barely had themselves a defensive year of the ages. Preston Smith with 13. Of course, they're not going to show our guy because they just don't respect the Seahawks. Not going to show our picks because they don't respect the Seahawks. Tackles 160 for Shaq Thompson. Tackles for a loss. Chase Young had himself a pretty good year, actually, overall. Any uh, crazy fumble numbers? Four for C.J. Mosley. And then kicking. Myers was the guy, wasn't he? There was only two guys 100%, and it was, well, I guess Mason Crosby's the Jaguars, but it's a two Packers, but... If Mr. Myers doesn't freaking win this award, I'm going to riot. Of course, he also had a 60-yard kick, which was tied for the longest in the league. Best punter in the league went to Stout, the rookie. Best kick return in the league, I suppose, technically went to Goodwin. Uh, Crowder was pretty good himself, to be fair. Odell had a kick return touchdown, punt return touchdowns. Only Tyreek in the entire league had one. Which is a little surprising, to be honest. I know it's not the easiest thing to get. Not going to really go too deep into this one. I just kind of want to see where we are. Actually, I'm not even going to look where we are. I'm just going to look at this. So, 30th in offensive yardage. A bit of a yikes. Number one in defensive yardage, though, of course. A little misleading because we play on, you know, shorter quarters than the AIs do. 20th in points scored, which is actually not bad. And then 17th in points allowed. You can see, you know, we were kind of on that cusp of, you know, middle of the pack. Almost good enough for the playoffs, but once again, the NFC is a little bit stronger than the AFC for some reason. And because of that, we did not make it. Last look at the player of the week, which Marquise Blair got one, which looking back, I'd imagine was maybe one of two on the whole year. No, it was the only freaking player of the week we had. And it was the last week, and it was a guy that's we did sign to a two year seven, I believe, but you know, backup level, if you will. But here it is, the yearly awards. MVP of the league goes to Lamar Jackson. The I, a guy I didn't expect. I would have thought it would have been Brady or Allen, but it was Lamar. Very interesting. We're not on MVP. A lot of fumbles, which once again scares me a tiny bit here as we may actually lose out on running back of the year. Hopefully not offensive rookie of the year, though, because, I mean, that's just too good of a season. What's the AFC? I forgot. Oof. Don't know why I was looking at the AFC there, but... 
I am kind of curious to look at all the numbers anyways. I saw a different running back, and my heart dropped. My heart was literally on the floor. You could literally play, you know, soccer or football with it if you wanted to. You know, so pretty average, you know, pretty expected. The average uh, player on the list for most of these awards, in fairness. Now what we wanted to see, the NFC Player of the Year, which, once again, a little worried that we're not seeing Kenneth here because... You know, he had a really good year. He fumbled a lot, but, like, hello? Wolin was second for Defensive Player of the Year. That is something. Uh, of course, Rookie of the Year, Kenneth freaking Walker. That's what I'm talking about, baby. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year to Tariq Wolin. Mafe with eight sacks was number three on defensive as well. And then Kobe, a couple of pick sixes, I believe, with 10th. Best quarterback. Where? Where? Where's Drew Locke? <laughs> of course, not there. And then running back because of the fumbles, I'd imagine. Also a little bit less of a receiving guy, the third best running back, which still should be a Pro Bowl, obviously. My man's is an X factor, no matter how you want to look at it. Receivers, nope. O-line, though. Uh, Austin Blythe, number seven. He did have a pretty good year, I will admit. D-line, number eight with Ed Oliver. Linebacker, number 10 with Jordan Brooks. DB, of course, Tariq Woolen at number one. Does he get multiple dev ups because of that? And no shot they gave it to a four. I hate this game. They gave the four for four kicker the best kicker award. At least get oh, Crosby's on the other side. I was about to say, I forgot. 100% just locks you in. So what, what are you supposed to do? Like if you're developing a kicker, just sit, you know, get like a rookie kicker with potential, kick one kick for a, a you know, put it in, and boom, done. No other kickers at 100%. You've got the award. That is depressing of course we will take a look at the pro bowl rosters and the dev ups from the super bowl and obviously in general the super bowl regardless of the points uh where is it just try not to sim too far because i do want to see that pro bowl roster and also don't want to sim too far for re-signings and all that but the pro bowl roster we could play it not going to obviously not going to uh looking at the two rosters uh, as you can see brady herbert dak you know, Patrick Mahomes, Kenneth Walker, the number three running back. But, hey, he's in the he's in this freaking Pro Bowl. What do you want? That's, like, the closest thing to a Super Bowl we have. Center? Damn, Blythe's not there. Uh, pass rushers not on the list. Where the hell is Tariq Wall in the number one corner in the league? What a player. And Josh Myers, good enough for the Pro Bowl. Not good enough for the number one uh, on the list. No good win in the Pro Bowl either, which is a disappointment. But... We've got a few. That's all I can say. We got a few. It is the Packers versus the Ravens in the Super Bowl. And the winner of this Super Bowl in the first year of our Seahawks franchise is the Baltimore Ravens. Let's take a look how the actual playoffs shaped out, though. I do want to see what you know, kind of the Rams did. They didn't make it, though, so suck it. That's all that matters, kind of. Uh, and the Rams law. No, they won. Wow, what a game, though. 47 points. They put a lot of points up against us, too. Uh, and then they were able to beat the Niners. And then the Packers beat them by 10. Fair enough. Probably going to have an absurd amount of XP to use or upgrades to use. But let's take a look at these dev ups, which, of course. Oh, Metcalf is young, in fairness. Did not drop in dev, which is awesome. Love that. Glad. It's good to see it. Appreciate you. Uh, no dev ups outside of Kenneth, but once again, a ton of upgrades, which probably are going to all go to power back because once again, I do want to see him strive 12 K XP for the NFL yards leader and rookie of the year combined, which is a little low to be honest for a guy that put up the season he did, but we'll take it. It's still XP that we didn't have before. And then defensively, what kind of dev ups do we have? Tariq Wolin. Okay, so you do stack up things, which I love to see. I did not honestly think that was going to happen, but it, it did. DB of the year and defensive rookie of the year were the ones to give them from star or to normal to superstar. So didn't force the dev, and I'm glad we didn't. Sure, you can make the argument that maybe he does deserve, uh, you know, even X Factor, but superstar is perfectly fine. Uh, he is a guy that plays the inside shade pretty well so we're gonna put him on inside shade we have some upgrades for him as well any other dev ups i didn't really get a chance to look because i was looking directly at wool and i'm gonna be honest with you uh and i don't think we went down or up in any of the devs which is fair enough we're cool with that as long as we don't go down that's all i ever asked for don't even know if you can actually drop down from star dev to be honest but 
Would have loved to see Will Smith get a superstar because 10 sacks, it's a pretty good season, double digits, but didn't happen. But I got a couple upgrades, so that's nice. Tariq Woolen is now a superstar of elementary corner, and Kenneth Walker is an X Factor, the two rookies of the year, making for a really nice class. Jordan Brooks, if he was superstar, would get his second slot. We're going to go with Field General, and that will give him five upgrades, which will be pretty modest. Nothing crazy, but as far as how he's developing, he's still pretty mid. I'm going to be honest with you. He's a really good tackler, but as far as his like uh, coverage and his block shedding goes, not great. Not great. And well, Wilson, now an 80 overall, gets a speed rusher upgrade, which was not beneficial to finesse itself, which is really big of an L. Charles Cross. Take a look at what he's weak at, which... Suppose there's more rushing stuff, you know, the run game. Still, I upgraded two power move for this guy, and he didn't go up either time. It's not a bad upgrade, though. His strength is now 84, and his run block power is now 74. Boye Mafe, the uh, hopeful edge of the future. Definitely had a little bit of a bad second half to the season, but a nice little upgrade here. Uh, gets him to 81 finesse move. And then we have a bunch of guys I don't really care too much about. Maybe I'll just upgrade them in the background. Abraham Luke is a guy we definitely looked to uh, to replace as he was awful. But you never know how the offseason off is going to shake up. You know, you just don't have a franchise quarterback. Who's going to want to come here and have a limited amount of draft picks, which are probably going to be used hardcore to get some sort of quarterback. Uh, let's see, Ed Oliver, which, of course, we want him to be an elite pass rusher. Now, an 86 overall power move guy, which two destroy. I mean, it's not a bad upgrade, but once again, where are my actual upgrades to the things we're focusing on? Kenneth Walker, please get me some power upgrades that I can be proud of. Some trucking. Let's get to 90. That was a terrible start. Thank you. Another power move upgrade, or power back upgrade. Two to trucking. Okay, that was. If that was a bad upgrade, I would not have done it again, but two to trucking is amazing. And a plus one of brake tackle and trucking, which now puts him at 89 trucking. The guy's a freak. And then Tariq Roland, we probably should work on that zone coverage. But man, slot upgrades are so freaking nice. Let's go with the slot upgrade, which gives him a plus two to man coverage. We'll probably finish it out with a zone coverage unless we actually get a nice zone boost from the slot. And it's not a good boost, but it's still nice. 82 zone or man coverage. Let's go with zone for the final one. I really love slot upgrades, but, you, I mean, we do need some zone. And that was a really bad upgrade. That's why we go with slot. <laughs> but, obviously, the man's a superstar. He's a beast. And the rest are all, you know, kind of backup, so we don't really care too much about. Maybe Bubba Bolden played himself a decent bit of snaps, especially near the end of the season. And two to zone coverage is still pretty raw of a player, but he's got potential. Kalen Barnes, we probably should have played him more, but... You know, we just, I mean, Kobe Bryant was the guy that everyone wanted to see, and he was the guy that was seen. He did have an okay season, in fairness, but I actually didn't check. Did he go up in dev? I don't think he did. I think it was Sidney and Coleman that were at star. Kobe was still probably at normal. Yeah, sadly, still at normal. Uh, but yeah, in the offseason, positions we are looking to replace. Left end Shelby Harris for sure is one of them. Middle linebacker would not be uh, a bad idea to, uh, you know, upgrade corner a thought perhaps but i think we're actually pretty good at that position obviously the plus you know whatever bonuses are really throwing us off a little bit puna ford wouldn't be the worst guy to uh, you know replace either and then offense the whole offensive line a quarterback it's not the worst team as far as like cornerstone pieces go right like they're obviously lower overalls and we're going to still need to develop them quite a bit before we get to that that level but we have cornerstone pieces ed oliver Cindy jones woolen adams and Wosu, maybe. Brooks, for sure. Mafe, maybe. Obviously, a lot of the skill position players on offense. It's just got to keep developing those guys and then shore up the offensive line and hopefully get a quarterback for them that's willing to be protected. Anyways, that is going to be it for the Stats and Awards video. I was debating on if I wanted to do one or not, and I was like, you know what? I really don't want a 15, 20-minute video added on to the uh, Week 18 game, and then it would pretty much basically spoil that. It's, oh, well, if it's a longer video, then clearly... You know, he goes into something else for a reason. You know, maybe the entire offseason technically or, you know, whatever. Because, you know, there's no playoff game or whatever. Because, obviously, it's going to be a little longer when I'm actually able to go straight to the the Super Bowl and look at the DevOps and the XP. So, you know, that kind of would spoil it. So, while it's a little bit of a cop-out for an extra free video, it does make sense that it's a standalone video. So, I apologize. I was really debating it. I was actually mulling it over. And I was like, I think it would spoil it if the video is extra long compared to the other videos so i decided not to and 
yeah, like I said, uh, the off-season video will be after this one, a little bit later today, more than likely. Uh, you know, I did kind of promise it, so we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys are new, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe. If you're not new, really appreciate your continued support. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, and second channel, Care Plays, for non-Madden content. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!